All right, we're going to get started. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we're very excited to be here the launch event. I know um, you joined us during sessions during the week. We were uh, presenting with various um, clients and consortiums in different industries that have been uh, building platforms and moving to production in this technology. Today we're excited to do a much deeper dive on the technology itself. We did uh, bring along some friends and, and collaborators from the community uh, to participate throughout the day as well. So uh, right now, um, the, we're going to start with the opening keynote from 9 to 940. And we'll do about a 20 minute demo as part of that to take us to the top of the hour. We'll um, have a one hour deeper dive technical overview, then a hands on workshop where you can uh, download the code and get started, um, a meet the experts panel. And then for people on different time zones, um, we'll do uh, a closing keynote. If you are attending this one, you might want to actually hop in and spend some time just meeting the community and having some peer conversations. So uh, today it will be uh, Brian Dundarf. Many of you likely know um, Brian. If you'd like to just say a few quick words to introduce. Hi, I'm Brian Bellendorf. I am executive director of Hyperledger, uh, and uh, really excited to be participating today. Thanks, Brian. And uh, Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Kaleido, and, and Kaleido is helping to seed this new community. So couldn't couldn't be more excited to be with everyone and um, and and dig in and, and talk about Firefly and get this community launched. All right, well, let's let's get started then. Um, we wanted to start actually, Brian, um, just to get a couple of your thoughts. Um, I know we've been working with you over the last few months on, on the proposal, and we're um, really excited to be part of the Hyperledger community now. What really excites you or sparks interest for you with Firefly? Yeah, well, um, so so first off, thanks for, for hosting this event, and I'm really happy to be here. The, I, I, the thing that's exciting about Firefly to me is, you know, we try to ground everything we do at Hyperledger in uh, the reality of how people are building these applications out there. We are idealists, but we're also pragmatic, pragmatists. Um, we, uh, I, and we've known for a long time when you operate at the plumbing layer, as you do it with, with you know, blockchain ledgers, sometimes uh, when you're a developer and you're just starting to think about how to build decentralized apps, consortia-based kinds of systems, weaving all these different things together, there's all sorts of complexity. Um, not just at the uh, kind of technical layer, but the political layer and, and the social layer, all these kinds of things. Um, and so uh, inevitably, you end up rebuilding um, uh, some common tropes, uh, right? I, uh, when you build these distributed systems, how to handle off-chain data and on-chain data. Um, how to manage a cluster of systems, that 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 sort of thing, and you know we did have a project early on called Composer, which was uh, an interesting tool uh, to help people understand what uh, the, this concept of decentralized systems amongst enterprises, you know, how to design for them, how to how to think about the, building those apps. Um, but it was a design tool that people wanted to use in production, uh, and it wasn't really <clears throat> designed to be a production tool, designed to be a development tool. It was more of a almost a design thinking tool, but but to get you started, right? Um, and when that team uh, moved on to other things and, and they actually said, you know, because this was encouraging people to <laughs> use it in production um, uh, and as, a, as an ongoing development tool, uh, we, we you know, they wanted to actually uh, uh, pull this back and say, this probably isn't the right approach. And so since Composer left, we haven't really had a tool that made it easy for people to come in and very very quickly stand up these kinds of applications or, or avoid having to rebuild these common uh, common kinds of things you build on top of blockchain networks. So uh, when when we started to talk and you said you had some code that that was built off of the backs of all the different projects that 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 you've been developing um, and could help also answer something that's really key at uh, Hyperledger, which is how do we start to build systems that span multiple different ledgers, right? Um, I've always talked about uh, uh, the differences between Fabric and Bezu and Sawtooth, you know, just within Hyperledger, but then even Corda and Quorum on the outside. 
um, it wasn't like race cars on a racetrack. It was much more like different databases out there in the world, right? Um, MongoDB and MySQL are very different kinds of databases, yet at one level, you use them to store data and query data, right? But as developers, we know that those differences matter when uh, uh, depending upon the use cases or the rest of the architecture up above. And so Firefly helps uh, um, uh, you know, talk amongst different ledgers, right? Support for Corda, support, I don't mean to preempt <laughs> the whole the rest of the day, but um, support for multiple ledgers and such is also something that's been core at Hyperledger since our inception. Like how do we uh, support a diversity of different options at different layers? And Firefly really speaks to that. So all these reasons, you know, when we first started talking, I was like, yes, this really belongs at Hyperledger. Um, and, uh, and I think we can build a really big community on top of it. Thanks, Brian. Stephen Arbor with Composer. <laughs> um, part of a past life that we we're involved with. Um, so I think you, you partially answered this. You know, what's great about, really great about Hyperledger is just the diversity of projects you have. Sort of, you know, I think you call it the greenhouse where you lay them all out. Um, I mean, I think, and you touched upon it briefly, but just in terms of Firefly now coming into Hyperledger, how do you see the relationship between these other, you know, code bases and communities in, in uh, Hyperledger? It was really important to us that Hyperledger is not just a, um, you know, a hosting service. You know, it's not just like GitHub, but smaller, right? Or GitHub, but for blockchain, right? <laughs> it's really important to us, and this is where the greenhouse metaphor comes from, that the projects are aware of each other, that they are helpful to each other, that we aim for what I talked about in, in my brief keynote opener uh, yesterday, kind of an altruistic groups kind of environment where uh, the projects are, let's just say encouraged, but but even that doesn't seem as strong as what it is, like really, really encouraged to, 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 to help each other, but also think about design in a collective sense. And sometimes this can be a little bit painful, right? Sometimes uh, it can be a little bit like, you know, uh, we're just getting started here, who are all these people? Um, but uh, but what it's intended to do is try to help build a, a whole that's much better, bigger than the sum of its parts. And so, I, I, yeah, that's, that's, I think just, just, uh, you know, that, that's, that's where um, I, I, I'm just excited about the project coming in and, and, and hoping that we get this started in a, in, in really the right way. Thanks, Brian. Um, I guess the last question is just, what are things you think people should keep an eye out for today as we go through the Firefly Hyperledger day? Well, I, I think this is a chance for people to dive really into what what is Firefly, uh, what are these different components, um, uh, to understand what you know where uh, the design of this comes from, uh, uh, from the, the the work that you've done for so many different clients, um, and uh, I, and and just start climbing that learning curve so that I, I not only can people start using this as quickly as possible, but but also find a path to becoming a contributor of some sort. You know, it's really important to us that everyone who uses software that comes out of Hyperledger really thinks about, uh, um, I, I, you know, how to understands how do I not just ask for help, but how do I report a bug, and also understands it's a little bit on them to to when they report a bug, make it a good bug report, understand um, where things are going, uh, what what's happening below the the surface, but that they're also empowered to be able to uh, figure out more uh, and about what's going wrong and and potentially contribute a bug fix, con potentially contribute uh, a, an improvement, right? Um, and so uh, uh, that's what I hope people understand is that you know none of none of those open source software is delivered as like a shrink wrap product that they you know should be discouraged from looking inside. Now this is this is something that 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 hopefully folks understand the 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 rationale, the thinking, the architecture, but also feel encouraged to get their hands dirty. Thanks, Brian. I know this is why open source is the most fun part of the job of a modern enterprise developer. So um, really appreciate having you on with us today, and getting some of your thoughts and perspectives. I know you'll be joining us again on the Meet the Experts panel, and then for the closing keynote. So thanks again for the support, and we've had a great week so far. So looking forward to um, the rest of today. Thanks again. Sure, I'll be right here. OK, thank you. So um, we, we wanted to, oh, <laughs> um, I wanted to dive a little bit into some of the business and industry motivators for Firefly, just very briefly, um, not knowing all the backgrounds of everyone who's attending today. So, um, you know, why have people been talking about enterprise blockchain for the, you know, more than a half decade at this point? Um, 
you know, Steve and I have been involved with this from, from the very beginning of when we start looking at blockchain and decentralized technologies for enterprise. And if you look across all the B2B back office processes, um, many, you know, are built on legacy systems or never digitized. There's you know, tremendous pain points, especially during COVID, we've seen um, supply chain disruptions um, and, and many other issues that have come up um, in, in healthcare delivery, et cetera, where there's a lack of transparency and a lack of trust. So uh, likely not new news for anyone here, um, but if we go to the next slide. You know, we've seen um, various analysts polling their clients and we've spoken with our clients directly as well. Roadmaps accelerated by a decade. Um, it's average the analysts have landed seven to eight years. So what does this mean for, um, for tech providers and for enterprises? We've really seen that digital transformation of the back office is an imperative now. McKinsey put out some very recent research. Only eight percent of companies believe their current models will remain as you know viable business models if they don't digitize. And a lot of people are talking about digital ecosystems. So bringing multiple parties together around a shared view of data, shared application logic, uh, tackling shared industry problems. So McKinsey is saying that these new digital ecosystems could, could account for more than 60 trillion in revenue um, 2025. And these, you can see a really interesting graphic, um, graphical view across all industry sectors as you look at you know, the digital, ecosystem economy and how that is now, um, you know, it's here <laughs> and it's continuing to transition over across all the different um, vertical domains in, in the coming years. So one interesting thing we've seen over the last half decade, people are really excited about the promise of decentralized technologies and blockchain, but there have been a lot of challenges and this has meant projects could take three, four, five years to uh, try to get into production. They've spent tens of million dollars, written hundreds of thousands of, li thousands of line of code. And, and why is that? It's that the cr when you're really doing things between uh, companies, you know, not just in the one company in their own data center, but across companies, these cross-party flows uh, require a lot of sophistication. Um, there's, you know, enterprise space, a lot of requirements around privacy, security, compliance. Enterprises have struggled with the skills, um, all new uh, frameworks involved, you know, different paradigms, digitizing, moving to the cloud, and these peer-to-peer -peer network um, frameworks and technologies. And as companies were trying to roll their own solutions, they ran into these issues, and meanwhile still trying to comply with all of the heavy-duty enterprise requirements. So it was just, um, you know, much too difficult to build an enterprise blockchain use case. Uh, what we what we've seen that's a very um, familiar pattern. You know, enterprises think the job is in building their first use case, and this can be an emerging tech lab or innovation team. Um, you know, they think it's writing smart contracts. You start a node, you build the web app, and you you deploy it. Sounds pretty simple. They, you know, they think it's about three to five components. Maybe you know, we're talking in the months uh, or maybe half year. What we've seen it repeatedly across industries, across you know blockchain initiatives and projects, whether it's just one company or uh, or trying to get to you know pilot with multiple parties or even into production, you know they have to um, design how to use the blockchain as part of the overall solution. You know, running the node, we you know we've seen across industries five to ten percent of the total solution. What's you know all the other layers of decentralized off-chain technology they need, and then of course the application and middleware stack. So building a lot of off-chain plumbing, struggling to code to blockchain APIs, and of course across the different protocols, there's different levels of maturity and sophistication there um, in terms of um, ease of use or lack of ease of use. And then you know getting to the realization that deployment can be a lot further off than what they promised to their stakeholders, investors, and to their um, clients and end users. So, and, and typically we've seen up to 40 components, 40 is pretty typical, and it could take a number of years, uh, probably, you know, looking at two to four years as a general range. So what should the job be? It's, you know, we believe it should be modeling assets and data, defining the process orchestration, coding to very simple APIs, so modern, modern development, and then you know clicking deploy so one platform and now you can build these projects in weeks and as you know brian referred to 
there are um, a number of consortia and customers who have already been using this code base to do exactly that. So with that, I think um, I guess the final thought on the business side is really, you know, what does this mean? You know, we are looking at really a next evolution and how to build the solutions. And, and some people are already doing that today. But by open sourcing this really important code base, we want the whole industry to be able to choose um, to have that option as well and to be able to build these Gen 2 blockchain solutions at a fraction of the cost. And then if you look at on the right hand side, just the distribution of how much time and money is spent on the plumbing, which is the teal or lighter blue color on the Gen 1 that dominates the stat, you know, the bar there, um, really flipping it. So you're you're able to move quickly through those phases, use the reusable assets, the, the infrastructure design and architecture as well. And then a lot of your time and, and money and focus can be on delivering business value and getting to business outcomes. So that's the most exciting part of this um, this whole initiative. So with that, I'd like to uh, pass it over to Steve. All right, thank you, Sophia. I, I you know, I, I think it's really striking trying to invert that that um, spend graph. Uh, you know, we we just we we've seen. We've seen the movie before, like Groundhog Day, where where companies really are excited to get to that business value, and and that's what we think Firefly is about. But let's zoom in now on on Firefly itself and 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 talk start talking about the technology. Um, you know, we 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 are calling Firefly a multi-party system, and we're going to talk. Uh, throughout the day about the term multi-party system and, and defining that. Um, it's something you may have heard of, you may not have heard of. Um, is a blockchain a multi-party system or how is it different? Stay tuned as, as we really peel back the onion uh, on, on this emerging term, uh, a multi-party system. But let me start with an analogy. We're all familiar with Docker. You know, when Docker came along, I, may, maybe you're a student or, or newer and, and you just assume Docker is a given, uh, maybe you've been around for, for quite a while and you can remember the first time that you actually touched Docker, you came across it. It was really such, it, it was such a breakthrough. The idea that all software could all of a sudden fit in a uniform box, how powerful that was. You can secure it the same way. You can do networking the same way. You can scale it the same way. You can do high availability the same way. All the hard problems for enterprises all of a sudden inverted. You've inverted the, the, um, the investment or the cost profile of an IT project where you don't spend all of your time doing that stuff. You instead build the application and make it better and, and drive more value for the user. And that was great. However, there was a problem. The problem with Docker uh, was it worked great on your laptop, but for an enterprise to go into production, it, Docker alone was not enough. A, a larger system was needed sort of around Docker, underneath, however we think of now Kubernetes today. Uh, and Kubernetes was such a, a game changer uh, when it came along, it, it sort of a bigger framework, um, you know, pl very pluggable. You know, there, there's not just one way to do networking, there are many implementations, uh, but they all conform to this plugin interface around Kubernetes, so you can select, um, you know, the, the, the best implementation. And of course, there's this core control plane, so you can manage not just one, two, three, hundreds, you know, thousands, that, I think Kubernetes talks about planetary scale, right, of, of, of Docker, and now all of a sudden you have this, this this other layer, this larger system around Docker, which I think is interesting, actually delivers on the initial promise of Docker, of helping us to put all of our software inside of that same box. If that's the metaphor, how about blockchain? Let's think about blockchain for a minute. And what a big breakthrough that was, 2015, 2016. I know, you know, my fellow speakers on, on this session, Sophia and Brian, were all, you were there day one. I, I was also there, um, you know, as, as it came along and we all looked at it and we said, 
how cool is this? Thinking about how broken the back office, you know, how siloed it is and so on, a shared ledger, automating our business logic and smart contracts and chain codes, et cetera. This is a big breakthrough. But what we've seen since then is a similar sort of a problem where it's just too cumbersome to get into production. There's, there's, you, you don't have that control plane, there's missing pieces. And so we believe then a, a, a multi-party system you know, is that larger system, just like Kubernetes was for Docker, um, where it's designed to be very pluggable, but in the blockchain space, we're thinking about all these off-chain layers, you know, data layers and middleware layers and workflow layers that for an end-to-end, -end, you know, a business uh, application, an app, right, that, that's a decentralized app uh, where you've got multiple copies of these distributed around, uh, all, the, all of that complexity, all the plumbing that Brian was, was alluding to, um, Sophia mentioned as well, and, and the control plane to, to manage all these different pieces of software together. And I think it, it specifically from a hyperledger lens or from an open source lens, it's interesting when you sit back and you say, okay, if this is the surface area of the problem, all of these layers, you know, there's, there's lots of activity and really interesting projects, um, but they tend to be focused more down into the data layers and around, you know, the blockchain obviously it, itself um, and, and around there. And there are interesting projects up, up in the middleware space, but we don't see a comprehensive project. And that's really what Firefly is trying to solve is to step into, you know, this larger umbrella sort of a platform or, or system. And, and that is, you know, what we think of as, as a multi-party system. But before I get into Firefly, one more picture, uh, just to level set on what a business network looks like, a, a consortium, a, a group of organizations um, that are trying to build a decentralized application and how this is fundamentally different from the previous applications that they've built. So the, the, the light gray shaded area is, is the business network um, and, and the, the big circles are, are, are the small circles are members. And you can see that each member is actually deploying their own set of, of the software. And each member needs a private connectivity back into their core systems. Um, they need both business and DevOps, data ops type of access into the application. But the, the application stack also has a, a different interface, a network facing interface. And there, there are multiple things going on here. Um, to, to be clear, there, there is a ledger there that's providing that, that shared common source of truth. Um, but there's also private data exchange. And we talk all the time about how important privacy is. But it's important to know that, that often lots of use cases need there's different categories of data. So some's, some's private, but some data is appropriately broadcast, right? And so the, the ability to, to broadcast data, to define things like assets, to store to where there's lots of innovation over the last couple of years, but it's important to, to keep in mind that all of this is, is going on. Uh, across across this business network, and data is flowing. There are data flows going on uh, across all of these di different arrows. And, and depending upon the technology choice, we, we see a lot of companies um, really want to constrain the, the amount of data flows that are happening on the blockchain themselves uh, itself. And so what, what we, we've seen and learned um, is off-chain, a, a tremendous amount of data flows are, are happening. And, and so the question then becomes, well, how do you achieve those, those off-chain data flows? And do they adhere and con conform to the same security models and, and um, the same network policies? And, and how, do, how do you blend all of these different technologies together and manage that along, you know, a, 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 in, in a consistent way? And if you had a control plane to do that, a single control plane, it would be a lot easier for you. 
so so that in a sense is is what firefly is is here for what is what is trying to, to solve we define that the multi-party system as that larger set of technology uh runtimes uh that are that are working together to give the application developer a really simple api to do things like like share data move data whether it's a blob or whether it's a stru structured piece of data, whether it's you know completely private off chain uh, and and pinned to a, to a blockchain, whether it's not pinned to to a blockchain, um, you know wh whether it is put through a blockchain with you know custom standardized business logic, um, whether there are whether there's an exchange involved. Right, whether it's data going both ways, or whether it's a payment, right, or a value transfer uh, happening for data, so DVP or delivery versus payment, all of these sorts of use cases we've seen are very common building blocks that are used over and over again, uh, regardless of the industry, right, ac across uh, across the space. And so, being able to create these robust data flows. Um, in a decentralized way, right? So everyone's still running their own stack, uh, they're still cross-connecting, very event-driven. It's an incredibly important part of the design principle here, and a, flex a flexible technology framework. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the roadmap as the day goes on. But I mentioned the sort of the term and umbrella project, but being able to plug in other things, well. In, in a, a, a scenario that we'll, you know, we'll, we'll dive into where an organization shares another piece, wants to share another piece of data with another organization, you know, the, how, how's the discoverability of that? Well, maybe they broadcast the fact that this data exists. Um, you bring in the broadcast capability. Maybe they need to pay for that, the data as they receive it. So you bring in tokens. Maybe you need to prove that you have the data without disclosing the data. So you, now you're getting into you know, confidential computing. So you can see how, you know, this, this larger system, we, it's really important for Firefly to be able to plug in more and more technologies as, as it evolves. I do want to, to want to let you know, you know, where this C contributions come from. Brian has, has mentioned, you know, one of the things that's interesting from a Hyperledger perspective is that, um, you know, this, this code has gone through generations, um, but it was actually, a core part of the Clido product itself. So it takes our six years of learnings and three years of active development. And there's about 80,000 lines of code that have, that have gone in um, to this contribution. We, we think Firefind is actually a next generation evo evolution of, of the code, so sort of a, a V2 or V2.5. And we've taken the opportunity for this launch to really improve um, a lot of a lot of things based upon real world use, uh, and so we've got uh, customers that are that are using um, uh, the prior generation of code that we're going to move over to Firefly. Um, uh, but you know, just having that feedback loop already in place uh, gives Firefly. You know, we're we're not starting just out of the blocks. We're actually starting already in motion, and so that that's exciting a part of the project. We're going to go deep into the Firefly node. Um, uh, we're going to take you through all these different uh, layers and different parts uh, of Firefly itself, um, starting with the core, uh, which is sort of the brain, uh, where uh, you know you have simple APIs that that you can uh, build build with as, as an application developer. You're really interacting with the core. Uh, and the core is, is helping and facilitating uh, everything for you. Uh, and and it's, 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 it's almost like the wizard behind the curtain that, that's hiding all, all of the, the complexity behind these, these simple APIs. Um, it's very event driven, as I said a minute ago. So, uh, you know, uh, you, can, you can register callbacks and, and just get events delivered, not worry about, you know, transaction pools and, and um, you know all the all the goop down in, into the plumbing. We've we've abstracted that away, and we, we give you configuration down in, in, in these different layers. Um, and we've brought a tremendous amount of engineering down into 
these different connector layers uh, to, to handle uh, the, the coordination and, and the complexity of, of interacting with these systems. And so that, that again means to you as a developer, you have a really nice simple um, uh, microservice in, in the core to, to integrate with and, and to build your application upon. So down in, in the connector layer, uh, there, there are you know, really, really lightweight you know, connectors, there are heavyweight connectors, they, they adhere to the, the plug-in architecture, which is something that we'll talk about throughout the day. Uh, there are, uh, we don't force, for example, any particular protocol of, of, of between the connectors and the actual runtimes. We, we, we've built flexibility there, uh, knowing that the runtimes themselves are, are built on different technologies. Uh, but some of these connectors are, are doing quite a, a lot of lifting. For example, the blockchain interface, um, you know, there's ETHConnect out there, Corda Connect, and there's, there's a lot of interest and in, in activity in kicking off Fabric Connect as well. Um, and and the, so the blockchain interface uh, is, is, is interacting with the, the blockchain directly. And it's important to point out that the blockchain itself is playing a, a critical role uh, in, in the operation of Firefly, um, re really important and, and relied upon. Um, it's there at, at startup. You, you need to select as part of your base configuration which protocol you want to use, uh, and, and you're off and running. But in addition to the blockchain, you know, there's, there are data exchange um, components um, that, that use completely off-chain methods of, of delivery and you know, blockchain back methods of delivery as well. So, so there's, there's broadcast, um, there's uh, a public storage implementation using IPFS or interplanetary file system uh, as, as a shared storage or, or broadcast, and that's tied to the broadcast type operations. Um, uh, and, and then you know, looking forward as well, um, you know, token this 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 is an area of active design now and, and active work the ability to um, to use tokens really simply and, and easily uh, as you build your firefly based applications and then and then a network map so these technologies um, you know each require their own organizational identity uh, so having a having a single place where that's accumulated distributed across the network things like permissioning um, and so on. It's almost thinking about it like an address book where um, if you want to send something to organization, your organization A, and you want to send something to organization B, you can do that readily and easily. So there, there, that's a quick view and, and, and we'll certainly be getting into lots more detail. Just a couple more points before we get over to the demo. I, I did want to highlight the fact that um, Firefly is really designed for multi-protocol support. There's a lot of interest in, in the, the community already, even at its launch, to, to ha have full support for, for the big three protocols out there. Um, uh, and, and we really anticipate that that's the direction the community is going to go with to ensure full support for, for all of the big three. Firefly is ready for enterprise. You know, that's, that's why, as Kaleido, when we looked to, to seed this contribution to really build this community, Hyperledger was a no-brainer for us um, with its enterprise focus uh, for, for DLT and, and ledgers and all the related decentralized technologies. Um, you know, you know, seeding a, a multi-party system within this community, we're, we're really uh, hopeful and excited about the path ahead there. Uh, it is it is 100% designed for enterprise use. So starting with the Apache 2, you know, enterprise license uh, friendly license, uh, um, we're committed to to the open governance and the values of, of Hyperledger and, and the Linux Foundation and building this community. We invite everyone to get involved and to find a way to be involved, and we'll talk about ways to do that throughout the day. Uh, enterprise grade, um, so you know, cloud. Cloud native, cloud ready, very modern, uh, scalable, resilient type of software. And then I touched on this already, but the idea of the extensibility of it, sort of future proofing the, this multi party system. We see that other technologies will emerge, you know, things like zero knowledge proofs and confidential computing, which are sort of on, com, coming of age of their own right. And so, 
So making it really pluggable and extensible. And that, what, what else this could mean is, this pluggability is, hey, you're, maybe you're a, a really large enterprise or you're part of a really large network. Maybe you need a completely custom way of exchanging data that, that just makes sense for you. Well, this plug-in interface is, is really simple for you to pick up. So you could be building on standard APIs at the Firefly layer, but have your own, you know, your own custom extensions as well. And that's, that's all permissible and, and understood as part of the project. I wanted to emphasize one more time just, just how important blockchain is to, to Firefly. Um, Some pieces around around the core blockchain technology that's running. You know, things like global ordering and finality are really important. Really important to coordinate you know, across different organizations, um, uh, and that's sort of the the bedrock upon which we build it. Uh, things like the the immutability of data, um, you know, and, and being able to to agree and, and have that single source of truth of, of what the data is and, and what order the data it arrived in, and, the, and then building upon that sequencing and triggering, uh, but also the, the larger conservation of value and, and thinking about um, you know, that, that other layer of, of tokens that, that is really powerful programming model as well for, for uh, developers. Firefly is, is, is bringing all of that to bear, but it, we are extending it um, with simple APIs, with you know, off-chain mechanisms uh, for, for data delivery, um, thinking about efficiency. So we're gonna talk about how batching happens um, uh, and, and how grouping happens uh, and, and some of the other techniques that we've seen are, are really necessary to achieve um, you know, enterprise levels of scale. So that's all easy and solved and sort of in the box uh, for you. Um, you know, large off-chain payloads, we'll talk about how those sorts of things happen. Maybe it's sensitive regulated data. Um, you know, and, then, and then thinking, you know, going a little bit beyond you know, events happening and, and thinking about going from triggering to streaming, right? And, and, and thinking about, um, uh, how we can really up the level of process orchestration and make it that much simpler to build upon. Uh, and, then, and then also unifying or simplifying the identity problem of the fact that these different technologies need uh, to plug in identity in different ways. Uh, thinking about, you know, I mentioned emerging technologies as well. Well, we've, um, we, we've given thought to how decentralized identity or self-sovereign identity uh, could plug into the system. Uh, and so that's, that's going to be an area ahead, um, you know, on the exploration front. We see lots of opportunities with different hyperledger projects and other technologies out there in the broader open source world. And those explorations will, will go on. Today we, we're launching Firefly. Uh, we, are, we are formally establishing and starting to build the community. Um, if, we will be pointing you, and you can check out the booth as well uh, if you want uh, more specific conversations around this, but we'll be kicking off bi-weekly uh, open meetings that, that anyone can join. I encourage folks to go, go over to the Hyperledger website and to, to find us there on the, Hyper, uh, on the Firefly channel uh, and to get plugged in, uh, Firefly channel on Rocket Chat. Um, but just a, a really quick snapshot of, of high priority items that, that there's active investigation uh, going on. Um, you know, full fabric support we've heard at loud and clear from folks uh, is, is, is going to be, um, you know, a really great uh, capability to pick up as well as, as um, thinking about doing more with tokens on, and building more simple APIs for, for some of the common scenarios that, that we see are sort of the 90% case around tokens. And all of this, we, we want to build towards a 1.0 release, you know, targeting the end of the year um, where, where Firefly itself is hardened and we, we really um, use the glide path of, of Hyperledger and think about things like security and audit verification and so on that you really value from, from the, the Hyperledger community and, and, and get that 1.0 
release out there. And so we'll be on a sprint at, as a community to, to get there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to get there. Um, and and with, with those thoughts, that sort of concludes uh, the overview or, or the, uh, the opening keynote.